Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to present to you this keynote about um, closing the gap African style. Uh, thank you to get delegates of um, State of the Map Libya, and thank you for allowing me to speak in English. I'm extraordinarily grateful and aware of the privilege that I can do this in this language. Um, I also want to warn you that uh, this is a slightly amended version of the State of the Map keynote that I delivered in November uh, for State of the Map Africa. Although it has been augmented with information that is relevant to Libya, and I hope you really enjoy this changed and updated version. So let's get started. What am I speaking about today? Under the theme of enhance the culture of open knowledge, I want to talk about the specific challenges that face our open communities across Africa. I also wanted to show just how aligned we are, how facing the, these challenges that we have gives us an opportunity to address these multiple gaps on our terms uh, using our own solutions, African, multiple African solutions that are relevant to us and to our situation. Not having things pushed on us, but finding the solutions ourselves. And together we can not just close the gaps that are facing us, we can obliterate them so that they don't crack open again in the future. So basically, this is why we are here, this continent. You are at the very, very north of it. I live in Simonstown, South Africa, at the very, the, one of the most southernmost tips. My name's Isla Haddo Flood, and um, I was born in Zimbabwe. But due to the implosion of my parents' marriage, um, my brother and I were split between Zimbabwe, South Africa, and the United Kingdom almost all our lives. My earliest experience of Africa is from the sky, flying back and forth from the very far north to the very far south, seeing a vast continent of hills and mountains and lakes and deserts, vast deserts and vast um, forests and uh, just incredible spaces that um, when I tried to read about them were not there. My ferocious reading was filled with holes and the older I grew, the more I realized that if it was difficult for me as a child of privilege to find stories or information that I craved that reflected my reality and environment, uh, it must be impossible for people who didn't have those um, that basis in life, but also who's all of those many, many experiences that just weren't there for people to explore or see and uh, feel validated and seen. And so I spent my career finding ways to facilitate the amplification of Africa's voices, expressing, allowing them and providing platforms for them to express their passions, interests, cultures, imaginations, realities and experiences on whatever platform, whether it is digital or public art or poetry um, available. So um, I've helped people through art, photography, film, and now for 10 years on knowledge creation on, um, and dissemination on the Wikimedia projects. Once I had control of my own movement and trajectory, I've really made, um, managed to work through um, the many ways that people can explore this. Um, and as you know, the most successful um, and the very best projects are those that are not done alone, are never done alone. My work is uh, co-created with a dinosaur among Wikimedians, and I am constantly inspired um, and the work that I do validated, that we do validated by an intrepid courageous and growing group of Wikimedians across Africa and around the world. And many of you are in this audience, stalwart open map street mappers, um, flipping your open movement hats between 
Wikimedia and Creative Commons and OpenStreetMaps and all many other varieties of the open movement to bring the very best of Africa's knowledge to a global audience. So why are we here today? Well, we've all seen this true, represented, true representation of the size of Africa. Um, and why is Africa so misrepresented? So the whys are multiple, um, maps matter. They are essential for knowing where you are in the world um, and knowledge is power. Because knowledge is power, misrepresentation and manipulation of the truth as a mean, is a means to control and disempower those um, that you want the power over. Manipulation is an aspect of colonialism, it's an aspect of um, many governments and many um, overarching people who wish to make sure that um, Africa was seen to be insignificant in comparison to the, the North. Um, and for many years it worked, but we have the power to change that. Uh, all those, some of those structures that were created by colonialism are still remain, uh, the, the way that um, our borders still exist. Um, they still infiltrate, these structures still infiltrate our collective understanding of the world and guide how countries and therefore their citizens see themselves. But let's get back to some stuff that we can control. And part of that, when I joined, started on this journey, um, this is what the state of Wikipedia looked like in Africa in 2011. There are tiny little dots, one at the very far north, one to the left, um, and a few, one, it looks like one in, um, in Tunisia. This is the distribution of edits for Wiki, English Wikipedia, uh, compiled by the, uh, the chief statistician of Wikimedia, um, Eric Zacht. It looks kind of familiar. So if you, this is the Wikipedia for English Wikipedia. If you look on this image, this is from around the same time, 2012, OpenStreetMaps. It's a GPS dump by Stephen Kay and visualized by Stephen Kay. As you can see, I have to say, there's a, there's a lot more of um, OpenStreetMap uh, points and modes on this but it's still, there's a whole swathes of Africa that are empty and closed. Again, uh, similar time, 2014, this is the content density of OpenStreetMaps. Um, and as you can see, again, it is um, very, very heavily skewed towards the global north and, more de and the developed countries and very, very light on uh, the developing countries. So where are we today? Not that much better. These are Wikidata items and actually it does look a lot better than it was in 2011, but maybe it couldn't be much worse. Um, this is a Wikidata GIF that shows the development of um, Wikidata items that have been added between 2014 and 20, uh, 2017, so over three years. Um, Wikidata itself only really started took off the ground in 2013, 2014. So it could only be represented from then onwards. Uh, and I think this is a great representation of just how much um, information can be added just in three years. The next image is basically um, only a, a month old. It shows um, a Wikidata again, generated map of using um, the region of an intensity level of 25 for pixels um, by Adshaw. And it was put into, uh, it was submitted for Wikidatacon in 2021 in November. But it still shows that there's a lot uh, in the contrast between Europe and, the, and North America to the rest of the world is quite stark. So where is Africa, because ultimately Africa is a busy place. It's the true population of Africa 
um, looks more like this. There are 95 million people in 11 me mega urban areas that have more than 5 million inhabitants. Um, so 95 million people distributed across 11 urban areas. But below that, there are 6,740 urban spaces where people um, of less than 100,000 people live. And that's 180 million people. So more than double the population of the 11 urban spaces live in um, distributed in second and third cities across Africa. Uh, and then these smaller spaces are growing. The smaller spaces, even smaller than those other urban spaces, were between 10,000 and 100,000 inhabitants grew from uh, 4.7, 4,700 um, of those to 6,700 in 15 years. So uh, it's, what's that, more than a third um, that it's expanded. Um, and these urban spaces are growing. As you can see, this is what um, the a data point of just of geolocated of where people live in Africa should be looking like and not those empty spaces that we see in Wikipedia maps. So Africa, we have a problem. I know this is not news for anyone listening to me at the moment, but beyond these ca the catastrophic and traumatic consequences of colonialism and the persistent inequalities of the balance of power between the developed countries and the developing countries, there are big challenges that we face in order to make sure that we have access and that Africa's um, knowledge and cultures and experiences are reflected as equally um, and with as much diversity as any of the other um, regions in the world. And mainly this uh, is, Africa has a persistent issue with the digital divide. Uh, we will truly not overcome, um, we will not have a true reflection of Africa's my myriad cultures and, and experiences without addressing these very, very real issues. Um, in Africa, 29% of ind individuals use the internet, despite nearly 80% mo mobile coverage. Um, and only 28% of urban households have internet access. This goes down to 6% in rural areas. So the digital divide, and especially amongst, um, across when, when it relates to women, um, is has been put down to this lack of uh, literacy and skills, the affordability both of, um, of uh, education to, in order to acquire those skills, of data, of equipment, um, and then lack of relevant content. Like, why would you come there if you are not truly reflected, as well as concerns around safety and security. Um, and because of these four elements, uh, women, it has enormous impact on how women um, and men uh, access the internet. So women's internet use lags behind men um, significantly. Globally, 48% of women use the internet versus 55% of men. So almost uh, close to kind of half. Whereas in Africa, the internet usage drops to 37% for men and 20% for women. The gender gap in Africa is also widening. So the, the space between how many men use the internet versus women is much more um, disparate. So it used to be at 0.8 and now it's at 0.5 um, or it was at 0.5 in 2018. And the ITU, as I've expressed here, which is the International Telecoms Union, suggests that this is caused by a lack of digital skills. So this is both access issues of access and issues of education. Uh, the low ICT skills remain the barrier to meaningful participation in digital society. And this is also due to affordability. So the affordability of um, data, affordability of the technology and education costs, as I mentioned. The lack of content is due to people are interested uh, because there's nothing that people are interested, well, the people don't see 
online what interests them. And this is because people, of course, don't participate and um, contribute. And this lack of information that people want or need to consume becomes a vicious cycle. If they don't see themselves reflected online with articles in their language and re that are relevant to their experiences, um, they are unlikely to contribute. Um, and if they do not find recognizable experiences and perspectives on knowledge platforms, very few will return. Leaving nobody behind, behind is part of the United Nations um, sustainability development goals, and we are failing at the moment. So the world online basically looks like this. One billion women do not use the internet. The internet penetration, as I mentioned, drops um, remarkably for African women and for men. Um, and ultimately, these are the results of four main challenges that have shaped the past. But if overcome by collective effort, they can greatly impact our future. And these four main challenges are access, control, representation, and participation via access. 4.1 billion people or 53% of all people are online, but 47% but are not connected at all. And um, this lack of access, is, as I said, is incredibly important when it comes to access to education. The ability of people to access skills development programs you cannot learn to contribute to something if you cannot work on it. So um, it self, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The access also continues with 98% of the developed world uses the internet, but only 44% in the developing. Um, and interestingly, even countries, um, even in countries like the UK, where they have 98% uh, coverage, well, 100% coverage, one fifth are not online, they choose not to be. It's not because they cannot, they just choose not to be. But um, only 44% in uh, the developing world are not online and are not online because they cannot access. 29% uh, of individuals in Africa use the internet in rural areas. Um, and only 22% across Africa have access to 4G. Sub-Saharan Africa is ranked as the most expensive region in the world uh, for average price of one gigabyte of mobile data. Um, this is a cable.co.uk uh, report, but you'll be happy to know that North Africa is considered the cheapest region in the world, actually, uh, with $1.53 per gigabyte of data. So um, you guys have definitely got a step up as far as um, Africa um, access is concerned. And of course, um, cost also reflects on devices, like how are you meant to um, access it if you cannot access, um, if you cannot, uh, if you have nothing to access it with. So data means nothing unless you have the device to uh, access it with. And devices are the least affordable uh, in Africa with 62% of um, a monthly income required in order to purchase a usable device. Um, and this also access goes into control. Is it a lack of infrastructure that Africa has is in that, uh, that the internet speeds by country in 2021 are so slow, um, almost uniformly across Africa? Is that a lack of infrastructure development or is it a strategically strategically um, government uh, choice not to have um, fast connectivity speeds in order to control access? Um, and that control also comes from the very subtle of having slow speeds to the brutally obvious, which is when um, internet shutdowns happen, and they happen with uh, scary regularity. In 2020, uh, 155 internet shutdowns happened across 29 countries. In Africa, um, between January and May 2021, Uganda, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Chad, and Sudan all had either full or partial lockdown uh, shutdowns as far as internet was concerned. 
Um, and as we know, yeah, Sudan is still uh, had problems. And then there's not just the access control of like whether you can access online. There's also a con it's also controlled by what you can the types of information that you access um, are controlled by the cell phone providers who control what you see and uh, things like Google and Microsoft and Facebook and even the free zero rated content is controlled by what they feel is relevant to your lives. Even Wikipedia as the definitive site for sharing encyclopedia content um, is is mediated by Google because most people use Google to access Wikipedia, to access information. Um, and so Google can manipulate, has the potential to manipulate uh, the world searches um, for local information. And all of these with the, uh, with the exception of Wikipedia, all of these are for-profit organizations. So Google, Microsoft, and Facebook are all for-profit um, and don't have um, have uh, beneficent motives. Um, and then again, who controls the knowledge? So where does the knowledge come from? Where does our knowledge sit? What knowledge is recorded and what is not? In this slide, the top um, the top 400 universities around the world are represented. This was during 2013 and 2014. And within the, uh, the um, magnifying glass, that is where uh, the Middle East, North Africa and Sub-Saharan African uh, universities are. And all of those universities are upper high income or upper middle income universities. So you can see that there's a real uh, in a, imbalance with regards to which organizations have um, ac can have the facility and have the kind of resources to generate knowledge and um, update that information. And this leads us to representation. So uh, with representation, uh, who contributes the content and what information is available to those contributors, as we saw uh, in the representation of um, where universities and which what are considered good universities, um, who contributes and what is contributed, where that content is uh, also skews what people see. So um, Wikipedia, Wikivoyage, Flickr, and every other platform that aggregates is aggregated by user-generated geospatial content is similarly characterized by concentrations of content from the global north and only small amounts of information produced by the global south. Who contributes the content and what information is available um, affects how people see themselves. So 18.3% uh, 18 uh, of all Wikimedia content relates to women. Uh, and that's all Wikimedia content. Uh, in on English Wikipedia, 19 point, basically 19% of biographies are only about women. Um, but more specifically beyond from an African point of view, representation excuse how people see Africa. So there's more, there are more Wikipedia articles about Antarctica than there are about most countries in Africa. So about a place that basically is uninhabited. There are many more articles about places that are vibrant, um, contemporary and historically important places. Africa has double the population of Europe, but it has 15% of the number of articles that Europe has. It only has 15%. So, um, yeah, if Europe has 100%, 100 articles, there's only 15 relate of those uh, would be encapsulate the whole of Africa. More content, there's more content in Wikipedia about the Netherlands than there is about the whole of Africa combined. And so this is also, as you can see, is a persistent problem. And this comes down to who participates, who edits. The knowledge that is available is already skewed towards the global north so the people who contributed are more likely to be from the global north because there's more access to that knowledge. The global um, Hong Kong alone, there are more edits to Wikipedia than the, the whole of 
uh, continent of Africa combined. We have 87% uh, of contributors are from male, are male, 45% of, of those are based in Europe. Um, whereas, so 45% of editors are from Europe, but Europe only has nearly 10% of the global population. So you can see how knowledge becomes very skewed towards Europe in that case. 20% um, are based in the, the uh, North America, but that only represents really 5% of the global population. So 20% uh, of the editors are, or 5% of the population are reflecting a very, very skewed view of what the rest of 95% of the global population, of how 95% of the global population live. And interestingly enough, only 1% of you of the US Wikipedia editors identify as black or African American. So uh, they are almost all white in, in their outlook and their, their viewpoint. Um, and 1.5% of editors are based in Africa, which Africa itself has 17% of the global population. So you can see how uh, information gets skewed and how representation doesn't tally up to everyone. And how does this relate to Libya? Well, on Wikipedia, um, I had a look at it this week and there are 4 million page views per month from Libya across all of the Wikimedia projects. So that's, uh, sorry, that's, uh, for November, uh, their December values are not ready yet. Um, and if you look specifically at Arabic Wikipedia, uh, 3 million of those page views go to Arabic Wikipedia. So Arabic Wikipedia is by far the most utilized resource, Wikimedia resource from Libya. But then who edits the information that exists on uh, Wikipedia, um, on Arabic Wikipedia um, from Libya? And that would be nobody. So not very, not enough to be recorded. Ultimately, um, there is on average about fifteen thousand editors who contribute uh, five or more edits per month to Arabic Wikipedia, and uh, none of those seem to come from Libya. So uh, I hope that I am uh, encouraging you guys to really think about uh, ways that you can contribute to Libya. Um, and Arabic um, Wikipedia in the future. So why did I choose this image uh, of the iguana? Beyond it being a pretty awesome photo, and you might have noticed that I have a soft spot for photos, it shows the, iguana com the iguana's complete confidence in its own ability to bridge, a, bridge that gap by itself um, using its own um, propulsion, its own muscles, everything inside it um, to hurtle itself across that void and make that gap something inconsequential. We all have that within us. We have the ability to change this. We have the ability collectively to spring into a new um, space to be able to make sure that uh, we can close those gaps to make them absolutely null and void. It seems quite daunting, um, and as Nelson Mandela says, um, said, it always seems impossible until it is done. And I want to remind you that at one stage, OpenStreetMaps didn't, didn't exist. And look how amazing it is now. I will show you an example of that in a second. Maps matter. They are what connect us to, the envir to our environment, to ourselves and to each other. They chart a course through difficult terrain. They make visible what is often seems impossible to document. As a community, I am in awe of what you guys achieve and what you consistently achieve collectively. We are truly aligned, Wikimedians um, and open street mappers. The maps that you create are essential for us knowing where we are in the world. And knowledge, as I've said, is power, as many people have said, um, both for knowing who you are and for forming solid foundations on what can be achieved and where people can go. Um, and it's really important because if you look at this, they take us, maps take us from this incredible, if intimidating view of the world that was created by NASA, taken by NASA, 
and they allow us to scale our experiences and ideas so that to others can understand um, in the environment in whichever ways they need to. Um, and also so that we can reflect human experiences and relate to them and find them and see them uh, like this Tuareg dance in the city of Ghat or this boy from the streets of Tripoli. They can have their experiences validated and seen. By the way, these last two images were submissions to Wiki Loves Africa over the last eight years, and Libya has a particularly low turnout between uh, zero and 14 contributions per year. Other countries have reached up to 3,000 contributions. So uh, <clears throat> just hashtag just saying, Libya, please, please be uh, try and join with us with Wiki Loves Africa in 2022. OpenStreetMap contributors have mapped more than 70 million ways and 600 million nodes onto the African continent. More than 500 mappers from Open Cities Africa are collecting, have been collecting the local data needed to reduce risks in their cities. But beyond risk, it also just validates people's experiences and lives and their pathways that they take. Look at what you have done. Don't doubt that you will do more. Um, and I only wish that we could show something similar to um, within the Wikimedia space of how, um, how knowledge can develop. We cannot and should not rely on the people who cause this problem to fix it. People across Act Africa collectively need to take the power back to tell and share our multiple stories voices, experiences, realities, identities, cultures, and truths. And it's important that we do this together, together with comedians, open street mappers, uh, creative commoners, and open educators will make an enormous difference to how wo the world views Africa, but more importantly, and most importantly, how our people across Africa view ourselves. Thank you for being with me today, and I hope that you will come and join us uh, with Wiki Loves Africa and other elements uh, that can get Libya more um, strategically on the map. Thank you.